Katharina Beck. I'm uh, at Fraunhofer IIS, and I'm happy to present today a paper titled Harnessing Prior Knowledge for Explainable Machine Learning, an overview. And um, these, this was only possible with all these amazing co-authors uh, who are here. So um, yeah, I'm happy to start now. And I want to first address our definition of explainability, because we might come back to that later in the discussion. So how we understand or how we define this in the paper is that it's in general the ability of the machine learning model to describe the output in a form which is human comprehensible. And the algorithm typically answers que questions about how, but users ask questions about why a certain prediction was reached. And we make the distinction between interpretability and explainability, where interpretability is in some sense an inherent transparency of a model. So such as a decision tree, which is from its model architecture already um, interpretable. I want to make the point that not necessarily all decision trees are um, completely interpretable, depending on the size of them. Then explainability, on the other hand, is the, um, in the sense of that you gain transparency transparency through explanations. There are several motivations for explainability, and I listed here some of them, that they are required for verification, improvement and learning um, of a system, and also compliance to legislation. Now, starting with our work, I want to make a claim. And that is that explanations need to be accessible for different needs. And what I mean with different needs is that you have different user groups. You may have um, a physician which needs a different explanation than a patient. Um, and you have maybe visually impaired who will need different explanations than other people. And with that in mind, um, let's look at what currently is available. So. What we currently have is what I claim to be algorithm-centered explainability. So in the last few years, we have focused on rather generating explanations per se. So really, okay, let's look at how we can generate explanations. But these lack context and there's a communication gap between the system and the user. Now, what we want is rather knowledge-driven. So we want to kind of um, provide context for the users um, to increase the accessibility of that. And our idea is to harness prior knowledge that we may have available to reach exactly that. Um, so what we did is to think about hmm, what can this prior knowledge look like? And we um, use a framework as a basis um, that um, ha has already looked at that in the past, not in the context of expandability, but in more general. And this is called informed machine learning. And uh, the framework provides an opportunity to, to create, uh, to integrate prior knowledge into the learning process. So you have a problem, you have training data or like in general data available, and then you have the typical M machine learning pipeline. This has here four components. So it starts with the training data, which can be pre-processing, then you define the hypothesis set. So that's the parameter and the model choice. You have the learning algorithm and the final hypothesis where you want to benchmark and post-process and test against. And you see in the solid line, that's the typical data-driven learning that most of you will know. And you have the... Um, Dotted line, did I say dotted? No. So it's a solid line, which is a typical one. And the dotted line is the, the one where the prior knowledge comes in. And prior knowledge um, can come in different forms. So you might have world knowledge, you might have expert knowledge. And um, these can be knowledge graphs that you have available, but also logical rules, simulations. There's a whole field about physics informed machine learning. And um, this now, gets integrated into these different stages of the machine learning pipeline. We use that as a basis to now look at what where explainability comes in here, because it was only mentioned as a side effect in this framework that it may have an effect. And we looked at um, how, how it comes in here. How we did that was to have a literature search and we uh, gained an initial list of around 100 papers, uh, more than 100 papers. Um, we screened them with uh, pretty much two selection criteria. So we said, 
um, we need definitely this additional data independent source. So it needs to be different from the training data that we have available. And they kind of, the, the papers need to mention at least explainability or interpretability um, in, in, as their goal. This re resulted in 42 pet, uh, papers and we searched for patterns in them to see whether they have, um, there are similarities. And our result um, now looks like this. So um, in comparison to the framework that you saw before, we now have the explainability component in this um, illustration. And we identified three different approaches in these papers. The first one, um, we termed it informed machine learning to increase inter explainability, which is the typical flow that you already have seen before. And then we have informed explainability methods. Um, there comes for the first time this explainability method in where you integrate prior knowledge into the explainability method directly. And then you have, um, this is also um, an addition that you can, we call this, we call this deriving knowledge from explanation. Maybe it's not the right wording, I would say, because you cannot necessarily derive knowledge from something like that. But what is what is meant by that is that you use the explainability method to get some insight and then use that, um, formalize that and integrate that in the pipeline again. And um, to look at that in more detail, um, to make sure that you get an understanding of what these papers did. Um, for the first one, for the informed machine learning to increase in explainability, this is pretty much covered by the informed machine learning framework already. And the idea is that you integrate the knowledge into the pipeline to enforce an alignment of con comprehensible concepts. So you could see it as an interpretable component that we then uh, achieve in this model or in the system. And one example to get you a bit of an understanding of how this could look like is um, this is for a final hypothesis that you want to test how much the latent representation um, of a network um, that is available align with predefined concepts. For example, you have a, a set of stripes and you want to find out whether your uh, system is able to um, learn that or has that understanding of concepts. Then for the um, informed explainability method, the idea is that you integrate the knowledge into the explainability method to actually cater towards user needs. So you have this customizing component in there. And one example is um, in one of the works that they combined LIME, which is a postdoc explainability method with inductive logic programming to obtain um, verbalizations of an image. So deriving rules and then be able to actually give a verbal explanations um, of the images. And for the um, third, the idea is that you, the insight that you gain, as I mentioned before, is integrated into the learning pipeline again. And as an example is that you can use binary annotation masks that come from experts, maybe indicating from, from image what not to focus on. So you may know these images with more watermarks or something, but you definitely know, okay, this should not be focused on. And this is a way to actually in integrate that into the learning algorithm as a regularizer. To sum up, we found that the key benefit here, so of including this information or this prior knowledge that we have available, is the ability to increase the accessibility of the explanations, where you can provide more context and address user needs. Definitely one, pay, one challenge that we saw with the papers we looked at, and I think that's the general problem with explainability, is how do you evaluate it? So how do you really measure the impact that you have of integrating the prior knowledge and what precise effect does it have on the um, explanation component? And um, we also thought about, okay, what potentials do we see here? What open research directions um, do we see here? And we've found three that I want to mention here. The first one is knowledge formalization. So there is a lot of um, knowledge available for in domain experts and also um, like it's this, especially this fuzzy expert knowledge that maybe is there intuitively. So they will say, ah, oh, yeah, I think it's like this. And yeah, this is just my intuition. And if we can are able to transform this fuzzy knowledge into formal representations, we can use it again. So I think we definitely can gain a lot by um, formalizing knowledge. The second one is to make the implicit development process that we often see 
more formalized. So sometimes you will see like in a short sentence, oh yeah, we did this um, with the parameter tuning or regarding the model choice. And I think these should be more explicit in the paper to also um, make um, to have benefits in that direction. And the last one is um, regarding this informed explainability. So I think we really have potential of personalizing explanations by utilizing information or prior knowledge that we have available somewhere and make that more, yeah, keep that in mind that we really have information that, um, that can be used and to improve the explainability components. With that, I'm done with my talk. Thank you.